Hello everyone, so today I'm going to react to Dr. McDougal and his wife Mary and Heather and, well, Heather's his daughter, I should have clarified. Um, by the way, if you hear a bunch of noise, it's roofers. Yeah. Fun times. Um, so yeah, here we go. This is Dr. McDougal talking to us about what keto is. What's keto? Let's let's just get into it. We skipped part of the intro, and then once the Q and A starts, sorry, I had to. Then uh, I'll stop reacting. You know, I've been working on this talk about uh, about uh, Ozempic <laughs> and the semaglutide, uh, the make yourself sick injections for diabetes that so many people are, are wanting to to take to lose weight. Be it can make you sick. Ozempic can. I've heard of horror stories of people taking it. Because they can't. They can't. Because, you know, I, I think, and where I have to start off this whole presentation, which, Heather, we've got to put this together. You know, <laughs> you've got to put me on the, on, on, you know, on the line, uh, give me a date, put some pressure on me so I can finish this talk up. But what we're going to start out is we're going to start out with the hunger drive. My head hurts feeling his i'm sure he's in agony all over he these like the really long-term vegans sound like they're in agony complete and total agony my head hurts just oh, oh. which i don't think very many people understand and Heather, if you put it off too long, he'll find a way to make it even longer because he keeps doing more and more research and he finds new things all the time. Yeah, well, I'm going to get it like done. Like this one he has to talk about tonight. Well, I just, I, I've got to make this new and important for people. And, you know, I don't, I don't think that they're going to really get it unless they start coming to grips with themselves. <laughs> and the fact that they got this extremely powerful drive that keeps them alive. They got three of them that keep them alive. They got the drive for uh, oxygen, not air, uh, 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 folks, but oxygen. Not just a drive for liquid to satisfy the thirst. It's only water that does that. I mean, kombucha does it for me, and so does yogurt. Your point? And they've got this hunger drive, which is satisfied by carbohydrate, by sugar, by potatoes and rice and corn. And you mean an addiction? An addiction. I think that's what you meant. I hate potatoes and rice. And I only like corn if there's salt and butter on it. Mm-hmm. I said it. People just don't realize that and they're trying to get satisfied. I hate potatoes even with butter. I will always forever and for forevermore. I will hate rice. I... Mm, nope, I might have a treat with a rice with rice krispies in it once in a while around Christmas or whatever. Other than that, mm, no more rice for me. I eat protein. I choked on rice when I was a kid. Or eating lots of food. So he's saying that they want to try and get rid of this hunger drive by eating protein and lots of food. Yes, you eat lots of food, Dr. McDougal. You got a little bit of something right there. Lots of food. Yep, when you're really, really, really hungry, you're gonna eat lots of food. Yes, slow clap. Yay, Dr. McDougal. Um, by the way, make you a more hungry not if you pair it with fat and just one little macronutrient you're forgetting there you forget that there's fats too there's fats proteins and carbs or uh carbs i had to or i don't know you know, I, I, I would like that our listeners, you know, we get, I don't know, we get six, seven, eight thousand 8,000 people listen to this little half hour, little hour presentation. I want you to take some time this week 
and find out about your hunger drive. I'd like you to stop eating. <laughs> it, it's, this is an, an extremely important part of your education so you can realize why dieting doesn't work. It's just too painful. I'm not doing a diet. Not what people think of as a diet. Not in the traditional sense. I'm eating a proper human diet. And the proper human diet is what we've been eating for the past 150 plus thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's what the proper human diet is. And no, that was not starches like rice, potatoes, and corn, and barley, and wheat, and crap. No, we only pretty much ate meat. We are facultative carnivores. Look into it more. Maybe if you were a carnivore, you wouldn't have broken those bones when you'd fallen a while back there, Dr. McDougal. Yes, I heard about that. And, and why... why dieters and medical doctors and etc go to such extremes to deal with this powerful drive the hunger drive i mean what are the most common things that dieters are eating honest question honest question what are most people who are doing traditional diets like traditional and that oh thousand calories a day calories in calories out what are those people eating are they eating uh, loads and loads of hamburger and steaks and eggs and fatty red meat and chicken and, and fish and liver? Is that what they're eating? No? No? What are the... Oh, is it... Uh, oh, yeah, it's probably uh, your oatmeals and, and rice and, and little chicken fried rice things and, and little... Uh, chocolates in the mornings as well and your little coffees 200 calorie a day um um 200 calorie um um meals five meals a day little nut bar things and little that's what they're eating certainly that's that's sugar that's sugar but no you apparently think they're eating loads and loads and loads of protein, loads and loads of fat, loads and loads of red meat and liver and eggs and fish. I'm not a fish eater, but if you like it, go to town. They put you on a, a completely bizarre make yourself sick diet, which are the keto diets. You go. Oh, uh, one problem with that, Dr. McDougal. I am not sick. I'm not. The only reason I cough is because I'm dry as heck. <clears throat> and probably because of lung damage from being around smokers. I was born with a lung condition, just FYI. I was born with it. Ha, huh, there you go. Diet debunked. On to ketosis. You I love ketosis. Ketosis makes you feel like holy crap like y you want to rush around the room like a friggin you want to race around the room y you feel like a kid again lose your appetite now we're giving shots of i'm not on shots what are you talking about what planet are you on hey dr mcdougall are you in there what planet are you on buddy diabetic medications which result in an average weight loss of like 34 pounds Takes you, uh, takes you 68 weeks. Yeah, reasonable. 68 weeks. Reasonable. 34 pounds. Then let's say you got another... Um... Oh, uh, let's see. 16 pounds. Let's say you got 50 pounds you want to lose and you've already lost 34, right? So, you've been on the diet for 68 weeks. So, a year and 
Let's see. Um, he slurred it the last time, and I had trouble figuring it out. I gotta calculate this. Um, so that's two months, and then. Uh, so a year and about three months. A year and three months, let's say. Excuse me. So. And. Yeah, yeah. But you know what happens when you lose that weight finally? You. Your body says, hey. I don't want to lose anymore. You could die. Let's 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 scale it back a bit. Let's slow down a little bit. But if you start to gain all of a sudden, and you know you're doing pure carnivore, let's say, or you're eating barely any plants at all. If you're eating some plants, maybe try and cut the plants out and go the rest of the way. If you are if you know you have a thigh, if you if you're suspecting a thyroid problem, go check with your doctor or cut the dairy. Do one of those things first. If you're still gaining weight or not losing, go check with your doctor. You might have a thyroid problem. That has nothing to do with diet at that point when it's a thyroid problem. So that's debunked. To lose it and then you hit a plateau. Yeah, sixty-eight weeks. How long is that, Mary? Fifty-two well, weeks is a year, yeah, so well, more than a year. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you, okay. So, You're in three months, pretty much. So you lose pretty, pretty, pretty well for a while, and then your body adapts to being sick. <laughs> no, actually, you're in four months, and no, your body's not sick. And then you don't lose any more weight. It's a, it's a 38 pound weight loss, on average, that you <laughs> that you get by taking these shots. I'm not on shots. I never went on shots. Again, Dr. McDougal, come back down to earth, buddy. Which could be twice a day, could be once a week, cost over $1,000 a week, a month. Yeah, I don't know anybody taking this. I don't know anyone taking these shots for sure. $1,000 a month. And uh, if you uh, add up 68 weeks, uh, I think that comes out to $17,000 for 38 pounds of weight loss. You're really interpreting the keto diet wrong there, buddy. And then you hit a plateau because you finally get to the point where, you know, you, your body says, hey, you've got to eat even though you're sick. You can eat and be sick. I had a cold, and it was kind of upsetting my stomach a bit too, but guess what? I still ate. Your point? By being shot up with Gila Monster <laughs> Venom. Look it up. It's Gila Monster Venom. Anyway, Mary, I, I just wanted to... Uh, don't know what that is. We, we gotta under... We gotta... I don't know what he's referring to. The Gila Monster or whatever? Take it and make a real clear understanding, because most of these people haven't done it. They haven't been hungry. Well, how long do you want them to be hungry for? Just a weekend. A weekend. Do you, do you remember when we did that? I do. Come on, tell us a little bit about it. I, from <laughs> your point of view, what was that experience that we well, went with? Well, like 30 years ago. Well, Heather was a little baby, yeah. No, she was a young, she young was, girl. Yeah. yeah, she was probably six so or seven. 40 yeah. years ago. Yeah. 40 years ago. Do you, do you remember that, Heather? When we... What is with these croaky voices? Why do they get these croaky voices? It's crazy. We did that? I do, uh, very, very Thank clearly. You wouldn't let us participate no. at all because we were no. too little, but I remember. Yeah. Heather sounds a little bit healthier. Makes me wonder if she's actually vegetarian. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to look more into Heather, I think. And so we, um, we belonged to this um, small church in Honolulu, and um, at the time, 40 years ago, they were having all this um, hunger in Africa. And um, people were actually talking about um, uh, 
the starving people in Africa and things like this. So we decided that as a church, oh no, you 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 challenged. I was them. the instigator. Yeah, you know, you know me. Always the instigator. What? Um, well, then you have to tell them your story. Well, yeah, you know, it was the starving. I said this is a wimpy way to show sympathy for starving people in Africa. Good grief, you know. You don't sh like. How would the African people know you're doing this? You're you're supposed to be holier than thou. You in this church. So I even told you, I don't, probably didn't tell him that. So I said, let's show some real empathy for these starving people all around the world. But this was a focus on on uh, African people and African children, of course. And so I said, look, why don't, why don't we go without food for the weekend? And I got half the congregation to go along with me. No food at all. And I'll just tell you from my point of view, I'd like to hear how you felt about it, Mary. Maybe you should start. Well, um... It was it was difficult, um, but only it was only difficult the first day. After that, it's sort of sort of like my body got used to it. But I can still remember, um, and Heather will probably remember this too. We we actually went on a picnic um, to the beach um, on on either Saturday. I think it was Saturday. It was Saturday because it was Saturday, like Sunday. And I was making sandwiches for the kids and I was making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to take to the beach for the yeah. kids. And, you know, I was going to like lick the peanut butter and jelly off the knife because I was so hungry. And then I made myself stop because I didn't want to break the fast. So <laughs> I was, I was, you know, I was just, I was that hungry. Yeah. Well, it's a great experience and you don't have to wait long to just a few hours to realize what you're dealing with this hunger drive. It's so powerful. Now, I really am serious. I think you should do this as a challenge. Set aside a weekend or three or four weeks. But it has to be, you have to be healthy to do this. You get I me? Mean, just anybody can't do this, right? Well, if you're on medication, I certainly wouldn't do it. Yeah. And if you're, okay. yeah, seriously, I'll thank you, Mary. Okay. But <laughs> otherwise, if there's no contraindication to it, just find out what you're dealing with as far as a hunger drive goes. You know, my experience with. <laughs> Again, the African people wouldn't know you're doing this, they wouldn't know. So, what is this doing for them? Um, also, um, if you're on medication that you never had to be on up until about, I don't know, your teens or your 20s, um, I would go ahead and say, uh, you did something to your body that required you to take it. So there are dietary changes that if you change the diet early enough, you could fix it. You can fix it. You wouldn't even have to continue taking the medication. Eventually, you'd be able to wean off or depending on the type of medication, stop it altogether. Bam. But uh, yeah. So you're admitting, Dr. McDougall, that people should be taking should take medications? Is that what you're saying? Well, I know some you have to, but I'm saying like, are you saying that diet can't fix certain things that require medication? Oh, it can. I could have been on depression medication. Here I am, medication free, jerk. How about that? It was debunked again. Friday night, I thought no big deal. That, you know, this is just a matter of a few hours. And then Saturday morning, I started thinking about food. And by Saturday evening, I had no more problems. I had no more <laughs> money problems. I had no more marital problems. Also, the people at YouTube seem to be getting soft. Very, 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 very soft. Because they don't want me getting notifications on a video that I freaking i said nothing bad i don't say swear words in these videos i don't know what the heck's going on i'm not monetized i probably won't even get monetized because i like to be blunt and say say it as it is so i probably won't get monetized but holy crap stop being so soft people grow a pair because i had no more problems with my kids i only have one thought on my mind and that was food and i, I guarantee you within 24 to 48 hours you're going to know how powerful this drive is. It's there to keep you alive. That's all you think about. And then I remember Sunday, you had a lot to do with the meal that we had. Well, yes, we decided that to break our fast, 
we would gather together in the church and um, I brought the food and we we made the food a typical um, African style meal. So we had a lentil stew and uh, just a simple plain lettuce salad with no nothing fancy in it and um, and some flatbread. Gosh, she really sounds like she's having trouble even talking, period. Taking enough air in, taking enough... Is that, that it? I'm too critical and I hurt your little feelings. Is that it? Oh, how about a muffin? Carnivore muffin. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. How I would do it? I'd do it, I'd do something with eggs. I'm not sure how I'd do it. I'd have to figure it out, but... Um, just like a typical meal that you get in Africa, and uh, well, I don't remember what I think we had rice too or millet. Well, I can tell you for a, for the half of us who participated to this point, bird food, people eating bird food. Yep, that's totally what we did in nature, y'all. We ate bird food twenty four seven. Woo! That was the best meal we ever had. <laughs> yeah. And Carbs. And it really, really, it's a powerful lesson and. And then once you understand this drive, you know, if you don't want to take a weekend, you can go without water for uh, probably a day and that'll be enough and you can find out about thirst drive. I get a headache. Yes. Yep. Congratulations. Yeah, I'd get a headache. So there you go. Although I don't drink as much water when I eat yogurt. Now, I, I have yogurt that doesn't have nearly as much crazy crap in it. So... That's something, I guess. But yeah, I don't eat as, I don't need as much water because I eat yogurt. I'm trying to eat yogurt. I need to gain weight, y'all. You can go without air for say two or three minutes, and that will teach you about the, about the breathing drive. But to really appreciate the hunger drive, you need to get out to a point of about, oh, 48, 72 hours at most. Then you realize how difficult this drive can be, how powerful, painful. <laughs> yeah. Only thing is, people on keto are doing 48-hour fasts. People who are really extremely overweight. Guess what? They're not in pain. They're not. They're not. They feel amazing. Excuse me. But yeah, they feel amazing. They love it. Some people even go the extra day. Mm -hmm. Tap into that autophagy. Yep. Yep. Debunked again. And, and you try and fight it with a diet. And you wonder why you have to go to such extremes. There's only one human diet. And it's the diet we've been eating since the dawn of Homo erectus. Maybe even Homo habilis or habilis or however you want to say it. Because Homo habilis was the first ape that was basically pretty much a, a meat eater. Like it didn't eat anything other than meat pretty much. And that's how we humans became humans. And so, yeah. For the last two, two million years, at least. Like, no carbohydrate at all, a keto diet, a make yourself sick diet, one that... I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I... I look beautiful to most people, in fact. I'm just a little insecure because I'm very... I'm on the thin side and I really would like to get a little bit more cushioning up there, if you know what I mean. So... Yeah. Threatens your life with heart disease and breast cancer and colon cancer. You... Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. But you're forgetting about the people who eat keto and have a, a, a CAC score of zero. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Debunked again. You know, all that, all those animal foods and that oil. Uh, animal foods have fat, not oil. Yes, canola oil does give you heart disease and and stroke risk, like uh, likelihood and all this stuff. 
Congratulations! You got one little thing. You won the lottery. You won two dollars. Congratulations. And then you go and you take shots and you spend seventeen thousand dollars to lose thirty-five pounds. I don't take shots. I don't take shots. And it takes you a year and a half. Oh, 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 wait, no. I take shots. I take shots at stupidity. How about that? You gotta go to the doctor all the time and good grief and Well, don't you think though, but I mean what I was thinking if you, if people didn't eat for two days, yeah. I mean, anything would taste good. Yep. She is right. I mean, No Carb Life uploaded a video about a 48-hour fast that he did where literally when he went back on it, oh, he just, he when he started eating again, he said he, he felt so, like, everything just tasted so good. But guess what? He wasn't struggling. From what it sounded like, he wasn't struggling, but he doesn't really feel comfortable doing it again. I think he just would rather have something with him to eat. So, I don't, but it didn't sound like he was struggling that hard. You think it tastes good? <laughs> it means like you just want to eat whatever you could find. And what you need to understand is after about, uh, about 72 hours or, or more, Someone like you would break after 72 hours. You wouldn't be able to stand it. You go into ketosis, you start burning body fat. You go into ketosis after like eight hours, I believe, actually. So, yeah, no. Instead of the glycogen that you stored up, <laughs> the sugar. You start I mean, maybe not. Maybe 72 hours in some cases, if you're like really filled up with carbs. But... I'm very ketotic by nature. I think that's why for the longest time I have not gained weight, even eating the crap diet that I was eating. But the grains filled me up, bloated me up to where I looked normal weight. So when I lost the inflammation from all the grains, I got very thin, um, very thin. It was like extremely thin and I'm still trying to build some of that up. I only gained about eight to 10 pounds and that might not seem like much I mean it it did but it didn't um it did fill me out quite a bit people don't worry about me as much now but I am still wanting to gain more I want to gain at least another 10 I would like to start burning body fat and you go into ketosis and ketosis ketones suppress the hunger drive so the pain of starvation is dramatically decreased after about I'm not in pain when I'm starving. Like, unless, of course, I wait too long. And then, but then the hunger will pass. And then it's like, Ugh, well, I can't eat anymore. Ugh. But if you're eating a diet that he's eating, you'll be in constant pain. I'm never in constant pain. It's rare that I'm in constant hunger pain. No, two or three days. Now, we never went to that point. We, we quit after just a few hours. Well, and no, so two we, days. Well, well, we started on Friday night. Quit Sunday and we, afternoon. And we quit Sunday afternoon. Well, this, this encouraged me, and I'm going to end in just a minute. <laughs> this encouraged me to look at uh, one, some of the work of one of, my, uh, one of my heroes, Ansel Keys. This, this, this. Give me a moment. <gasps> Ansel Keys! I can't. I didn't actually throw up. <laughs> Ansel Keys! This, the, the sicko who actually died from the very diet he was recommending! Ansel Keys, everybody, he's a hero. Bum ba ba ba. He what? <laughs> Honestly. Yes, Ansel Keys. You want to look him up. Uh, he's he's the man that uh, that really is the, the foundation of the Mediterranean diet. Uh, he did the. Uh... Okay, Doctor Gregor number two. Seven country study where he showed. Seven country stud. 
the study. <laughs> Seven country study was rigged. Rigged. The difference in disease, particularly heart disease, will look more into it. Oh, that's right. You don't have the brains to. Why based upon diet? I mean, he started all, all this uh, gummy meats, dairy products, uh, and uh, recommending that we eat a starch based. Yeah, and guess what? He died, I think, like what? 10 to 14 years later from the very diet he was recommending? Hmm, try again, pal. Hmm. He died. Ansel Keys did. Anyway, he was, uh, he was alive during the time of World War II. He was uh, in practice. Some of you may recognize uh, K rations. Uh, these are the. I heard he was a very, very um, pushy guy, too. I wonder why that was. Hmm. Couldn't possibly be because he. Oh, I don't know. Ate food that was not good for his brain. He developed these, the K rations, which were uh, uh, very high fat, very high protein blocks of food that the soldiers had to eat when they were in battle. Mm-hmm. I'd eat that. High fat, high protein. Heck yeah, I'm in. Except if there's carbs. Not too much carbs. If it's too much carbs, I ain't eating that crap. Did a couple of... Other than probably yogurt. Things. Gave them, you know, gave them some calories, but also because it had virtually no fiber in it, they hardly had any poop. Yeah. About that. So, um... You poop less on carnivore. It's a fact. It's a fact. But it's because you're absorbing 99% of it. Maybe. Maybe 99 at the very most. I don't know. But yeah. I'm probably getting numbers wrong. I don't care. I just like really tossing it in vegans' faces. Oh. So they didn't leave a lot of trails behind them for the enemy to sniff. Anyway, that was the one of the reasons. So it was K-rations, it's called, uh, based on Ansel Keys. So he Ansel Keys was smart to do that then, wasn't he? Hmm. He was actually kind of smart to do that. He did the stuff on cholesterol. That's why you are recommended a low-fat, low-cholesterol, low-animal food diet. And low-hormone, low-libido, low... Yeah, okay. Ansel Keys, K-E-Y-F. Low mentality, low cognitive function, mental regression, diet. And he developed K-rations, probably did a bunch of other things, did a whole bunch of... You sound like you got a, a polyp in your nose there, Dr. McDougal. Experiments. Well, anyway, he was alive during World War II. And uh, at the end of the war, in 1944, he actually started this experiment. There are all kinds of people starving all over Western Europe. I mean, people were, you know, you know you've seen the pictures of, of people, refugees and people in uh, prisoner of war camps and the skin and bones that these folks were. And so he wanted to study under experimental settings what starvation was all about. And so he got 36 conscientious objectors, COs, conscientious objectors. These are, are men who uh, didn't want to kill. So they resisted the, the, the draft didn't want to go to Europe and kill people, but they were willing to serve their country. And so they volunteered for a whole bunch of, uh, of community service programs. And one of the programs that 36 of them volunteered for was the Minnesota Starvation Program. Okay, and what they did is that they were at the hospital, it was a Minnesota hospital, and uh, they lived for a year. And Ansel Keys controlled what they ate for a year. And what they did is they starved them First, they fed them as much as they wanted for, you know, a couple of months. And, and then they put them on starvation period for uh, about 12 weeks. And uh, they caused them to lose 25% of their body weight. And, and then, then what they did is they refed some of these people. They refed 12 of them. But let me get down to the period of starvation. They were obsessed with food. You know, I just told you about Mary's and my experience uh, during the weekend, but they were like... Yeah, no, duh. You're starved for what? 12 weeks? Yeah, no crap. Did, did he starve them or did he allow he, he, them to have some food? He cut their calorie intake in half. Oh, okay. So yeah, they did, were. They had some food. Yeah, see? See? That's what happens. That's why carnivore diets work. Carnivore diets make you lose weight. 
unless you eat a whole bunch of dairy, which I do. Well, try to, because, dude, let me tell you, I need some weight on my bones, y'all. Yeah. They were they were eating, but they were still hungry. Still hungry. Okay. But enough so that they lose they lose about twenty five percent of their body weight. So they were hungry all the time, and you know they describe things that these men would do, like they would read cookbooks. They talk about food all the time. They would lick their plates. <laughs> they were so hungry, and uh, you know they become they became quite depressed, and, and they, they they cheated actually. Sometimes they <laughs> cheated. They were so. So Even though they had a whole bunch of patriotic thoughts about getting this experiment done, it was so hard for them. All right. Well, that just shows you how powerful that drive is. You have any doubt? You read about the Minnesota starvation experiment. Okay. He's a cruel man. Oh, I wish, I wish he had never done this. I wish he had never done this. Oh, he. I hope he's. I hope the devils are are uh using his bones as a drum just banging on him okay ansel keys and you read read what these men went through in fact there's some youtube videos which shows you pictures and some you know verbal descriptions of what they went through and you'll understand what the hunger drive is all about i will not thank you i already understand plenty but the last phase of this experiment is particularly important for many of us and that has to do with refeeding. What they did is they uh, refed these people, 12 of them, these men, as much as they wanted. You, when they were done with the, the starvation part, you can eat as much as you want. And what they had happened to them is they went into an overfeeding phase. It's because they were malnourished. Duh. Where they gained, uh, they gained a whole bunch of fat. Yeah, but you know what else they were eating? A whole bunch of carbs, probably. Get your mind straight. And until they gained the muscle back that they lost, they didn't stop this overfeeding, which is one of the arguments that's used as to why diets don't work. You put yourself through this terrible deprivation, this terrible suffering. This pain that you remember, you never want to happen again. And your body is just set to recover. And it puts on an extra bunch of fat. What did 60% greater fat did I, well, I don't compare know. to controls? Anyway, it'll be on the research. These voices, man. Search paper that I showed you. Uh, they put on a lot, <laughs> lot of fat, but not muscle. Okay, just fat. So here you are, you're dealing with the hunger drive. I know you've tried, you've tried the pain of hunger, that didn't work. And then you've refed yourself and you gained all the lost weight and then some, didn't you? Well, the same thing happens when you go off a keto diet. No, the same thing happens when you go off a keto diet because you let your addiction take over. It's different. It's an addiction that you're talking. You're, you're mixing addiction with with a need. Okay. You're mixing addiction with it. You you can't stay sick forever. I know these people try. They're very enthused. These Atkins followers. So uh, you know you. Which is it then, Atkins or keto? They're two different diets. They actually are. At least now the mainstream like in the mainstream view of things atkins is different than keto atkins is higher in protein you, you can make it for a while but eventually even robert atkins you know uh, in 2000 he died from freaking steroids and you know how that happened he smashed his head from some kind of accident i don't remember i think he slipped or something smashed his head okay he was ta he was taken to hospital put on these steroids and they made him put on weight and yeah that's how he died it's unfortunate but yeah and i was involved with the great nutrition debate in washington dc with robert atkins yeah, and right. even he was overweight in fact i i tried to embarrass him in front of 500 cameras was he overweight or did he actually have the normal amount of fat that most people should have and you were just that 
raggedy, skinny, bony person you are now. In front of a panel that included uh, Dean Ornish and a bunch of other experts, I tried, I tried to embarrass Dr. Atkins because of his body weight. I, I, I said to Mary, when I was preparing for the lecture, I said, Mary, I said, you know, right here, Robert Atkins, who I hope will be sitting right next to me, and he was, you can look it up. <laughs> 2000 nutrition debate, you can look it up. Anyway, uh, he'll be sitting right next to me. I said, Mary, at some point, he's going to say that his diet works so efficiently, so easy to do, so wonderful. And I said, when he says that, Mary, I said, I'm going to say, stand up, chubby, and take off your coat and show us how well it works. And she wouldn't let me do it. Stand up, little skinny, brawny little jerk. Show us how well your diet works. How does that feel? How does that feel, buddy? You did it. You did it. It's one of the things I regret that I didn't do that. So he, he's always been this way. Yeah, really. Anyway, uh, <laughs> needless Thank goodness to say, for you, Mom. <laughs> Robert, Robert Atkins died uh, obese. I mean, his we got his medical records. I just told you how. You know, a, a doctor who was a friend of mine from Kansas City he got his medical records from from whatever the, uh, the the records department was on the East Coast and. We went on a book tour. We went on a news tour. We were on CNN News. I was on the front page of uh, the New York, New York Times. Uh, uh, Neil Cavoda, I was on his show over at uh, Deborah Norville, did her, her show. Anyway, a whole bunch of publicity. After Robert Atkins died, obese. Sorry, I said brawny. I meant scrawny. I, just so you're aware. Of heart disease. Now, I know I'd have to unpack a lot to tell you all about these things, but hey, folks, he couldn't stand his own diet. No, he got an injury. That's what happened. And the drugs made him gain weight, you ignorant imbecile. Why? Because the hunger drive is so powerful. But anyway, uh, you only got one answer. <laughs> and as soon as you get to it, the sooner life will be under your control. You can get on with things that are important, like your family, your hobbies, your sports, your job. Blah, you stop blah, thinking blah. about food all the time or your personal appearance. You can't blah, fix blah, this blah. in one swoop. And that is to eat a starch-based diet. And I've told you many times, and you've seen it. If you look around the world blah, throughout blah, history, blah, there are no blah, overweight blah, people blah, living blah. on starch-based diets. Yeah, they're all skinny, scrawny, thin little rakes breakable by the touch of a finger. There were 2 billion Asians before 1980 whose diet was 90% rice. It was white rice. There was no obesity, no type 2 diabetes before 1980. Now, now uh, you know, somewhere around 12% of the Chinese population is uh, as type as what, what did I say? About 12% has type 2, di type 2 diabetes, frank diabetes. And wow. Wow. How's that little cholesterol-deprived brain doing, hmm? I wonder how big your brain is. Probably 900 cc's. And half are pre-diabetic. And obesity is rampant. Why? Because they gave up the starch. So, you know, my encouragement to all of you and to all the people that you love is to tell them they can't win. Yeah, you can. Except by doing the right thing, which is to eat the diet of a human being. Eat the diet of a human being, which is the Neanderthal diet, the proper human diet, the, the Homo erectus diet, mostly meat. Which is the diet that... 99.99% of people who ever walked this earth have consumed. Yes, they have. And as soon as you get back to the natural diet of people, which is oatmeal, oh my God. hash brown Shut potatoes, up. waffles and pancakes, oh, a lot. Addicted, addictions, carbs, 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 carbs. Lots of good Sorry. <laughs> things. We're having pea soup tonight, pea right. soup and bread. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful. Just, just what nature intended you to do. Um, how would you eat this diet in the winter? How, 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 how would you eat this diet? How would you keep this up in six months? Let's say you live in like those more northern parts where it's like six months of winter. 
How would you do this? Uh, you know, once you get back to the diet intended for you, you don't ever have to worry about a diet again. You don't have to worry about your bowel movements either. You don't have to worry about your blood pressure. Yeah, because you get diarrhea. Or your cholesterol. Probably not. I mean, some of you have abused yourselves to the point where you have mm. unrecoverable illness. But not many. I mean, that's what our practice is about, is we take people who are who desire to be well. They don't feel like they deserve to be sick and overweight. I'm not. I'm not sick and overweight. If anything, I'm underweight. I'm a, I have pretty good energy, but I'm just under underweight. Yep. Unfortunately. You know, they think it's unfair. They're such successful people. They say to themselves, I'm such a big success. I got an education, a job. I got a wonderful family. God, I'm so f And we are there to tell them why you're so fat. Okay. And how to stop. Okay, I get on with questions. That's enough. But that's what I've been doing all week. I kind of like to start out and tell you what I've been thinking about all week. I love how she like, okay, okay, enough. Ansel Keys, the Minnesota Starvation Experiment. Look it up. Spend some of your reading time. Curse you, Understand. Ansel Keys. You were a menace to society, and I can't believe your legacy still lives on. Oh, my gosh. I hope your spirit is burned away very, very soon. I don't want to hear anything more about you. I hate how people idolize you. Hate it. Hate it. Okay. But that's what I've been doing all week. I kind of like to start out and tell you what I've been thinking about all week. <laughs> Ansel Keys, the Minnesota Starvation Experiment. Look it up. Spend some of your reading time. Understand, you ain't going to beat the hunger drive. You might as well give in, just like every other animal does. Elephants do, giraffes do, hippopotamus. Right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got some. Good. That's it. I'm done. I can't with him. He is horrendous. Holy crap. <gasps> Garbs. Had to. Okay. That's that's basically him in a nutshell. Carbs. Carbs, carbs, carbs. Carbs, carbs, carbs. Carbs, carbs, carbs. All day long. Carbs. Let's make a new carbs jingle, y'all. Let's make a carbs jingle. Oh, I know, like uh, Elmo's word. Carbs, 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 carbs. Anyways, I'll see you later, guys. That That's it for me. Bye.